Hello, this is Richie Fenton, the Scottish Socialist Party National Trade Union organiser. Many of the streets of towns and cities in England and Belfast have been on fire in the past week with racist riots, where people of colour, refugees, asylum seekers, brown and black people who have lived here for decades are in fear of their lives because of the mobs who have attacked their homes, their shops, asylum centres and hotels that are housing asylum seekers. The question is, why did this racist violence flare up? In the immediate sense, it was incited by completely cynical operators with the use particularly of social media, such as Katie Hopkins, Lawrence Fox, Nigel Farage, and directly or indirectly, Elon Musk. Because when the little girls in Southport were brutally stabbed to death, then these cynical individualists used their millions of followers to incite violence against completely false targets, completely unmerited targets. Katie Hopkins, as far as I know, has never done a job in her life, started to claim that named somebody and claim that the police were covering up for illegals, as she put it. Lawrence Fox added that we must rid Great Britain of Islam immediately and completely, again claiming that there was a cover-up of it being illegal migrants, illegal asylum seekers or somebody who carried out this murder, when in fact it was a young man who was born in Cardiff to Christian parents before moving to Southport itself. And not to be outdone, the professional racist Nigel Farage jumped in with commentary on television immediately that the police were covering up and that it probably wasn't what they said when the police had said it was not related to terrorism. He asked, is the truth being withheld from us? Which incited this violence where mosques, and shops and other places and homes and so on were attacked where they attempted to burn people down, to burn them out of their homes, burn them out of their shops, burn them in hotels and so on. And one of the people inciting this racist violence, of course, was Stephen Yaxley Lennon, who hides behind the name of Toby Robinson and hides from a great distance in a £400 a night hotel in Cyprus and incited people to attack Holiday Inn hotels where asylum seekers were housed, threatening that they're about to be burnt alive. Those are the characters that incited this violence. But it also has to be understood, it didn't drop out of a clear blue sky. These acts of racist terror have not just been orchestrated by fascist minorities, which they have, but have actually it's a case of a torch being thrown into a tinderbox, the tinderbox of austerity and racist scapegoating that's been carried out for about 20 years by successive governments and in particular the recent Tory government, where they carried out austerity, left millions of people in despair and poverty and scapegoated ethnic minorities and scapegoated immigrants for the conditions that a section of the most downtrodden white working class are suffering. And that scapegoating, that othering of black and brown people and of immigrants has not just been carried out by people like Nigel Farage, a former banker who, of course, thrives on right-wing populist propaganda, but also from the Tory party and indeed from the Labour Party leadership of Keir Starmer. We cannot allow this racist violence, these murderous assaults to go without response. And it's therefore really encouraging that there's been massive mobilisations of a united opposition to the racist attacks involving people of all colour, ethnic origins and nationalities. And I think in particular, the night of the 7th of August, when there was plans for a hundred different racist demonstrations which could well have led to not just violence but potentially death. The fact that none of those occurred is not down to the heavy policing, it's not down to the heavy sentences carried out 
through the courts under the instructions of Keir Starmer. Yes, those may act as partial deterrents to some of the fascist and racist thugs who have been at the heart of this surveillance, but fundamentally, they were deterred from holding any of these far-right demonstrations because of the thousands that turned out in anti-racist demonstrations. In other words, it was an expression of people's power that stopped them in their tracks, at least temporarily. And that, I think, is the fundamental lesson that needs to be applied going forward. Because the fascist and racist core have not gone away, and more to the point, the conditions that they have tapped into have not gone away, and in fact are likely to get worse as the Labour government disappoints more and more people with their austerity, their benefits caps, their cuts to pensioners' allowances, their cuts to public services, their privatisation plans for the health service, etc. That will store up even further bitterness, and unless there's a response from the left and from an anti-racist uh, movement and from a movement that puts forward a socialist alternative, the danger is that the populist far right, including the racist element of it, the fascist element of it, will tap into that discontent. And I think a united movement with all the power of the organised working class, particularly led by the trade union movement and their allies and socialists, is what's at the heart of a solution. It's really pleasing that, for example, in Belfast, when a small gang of racist loyalist thugs took their instructions from a small gang of racist ultra-nationalist thugs from Dublin who had previously burnt down an asylum centre in North Dublin in Coolock, that when we saw the grisly embrace of bigots across the sectarian divide in Belfast with the Union Jack and the tricolour co-mingling as they carried out racist attacks on people, then the response has been demonstrations in particular red, led by three unionists who have united working class people across the sectarian divide against their common, common enemy. That's the method that needs to be applied. And in the case of Scotland, as well as mobilising for the immediate localised anti-racist demonstrations, the Scottish Socialist Party is advocating that the 7th of September rally that's planned in George Square should go ahead regardless, even if by then the racist thugs have retreated off the streets, it should go ahead and be, yes, anti-racist and anti-fascist, but also be in favour of measures that cut the feet from under those forces, that put forward an alternative that appeals to those who are embittered by the disappointment they've suffered, by the poverty that they've suffered, the conditions that they've suffered, that puts forward a case for unity against poverty, against poor housing, against job losses, against pension cuts, against benefits cuts, against service cuts, and against racism and fascism. We cannot allow the powers that be to divide the working class along racist lines. We cannot allow the workers' movement to be weakened by racist division, which, of course, these right-wing populist forces are more than ready and keen to do. We need working-class unity through the unions, through working-class communities and other organisations, working-class unity against racism, against fascism, against racist violence in defence of those under attack, but also advocating solutions to poverty and deprivation. Advocating measures like a decent level of wage, including a minimum wage of £15 an hour for all, including investment in education, in health, in public transport, investment in 100,000 new council houses to be built instead of people being punished by slum landlords, rent racketeers, who then sometimes become embittered and start blaming the wrong people. It wasn't migrants who created the financial crash of 2008. It was billionaire bankers. It wasn't refugees fleeing from wars and persecution, wars frequently conducted by Britain, bombings of their own nations by Britain. It wasn't refugees fleeing those wars and deprivation and oppression that created the 15 to 20 years of austerity. It wasn't people of colour who have 
created the obscene levels of poverty and inequality in capitalist Scotland or capitalist uh, Britain. It's successive Tory and Labour governments. It wasn't ethnic minorities who cut the winter fuel allowance for pensioners recently or refused to lift the benefit cap for children. It was the Starmer Labour government who did so. And therefore what we need to remember is that unity is our strength against racism, against fascism, against those divisions being sown in working class communities, but also against the very conditions that have been tapped into by the completely cynical puppet masters like Farage and Tommy Robinson and others. And therefore we need a positive alternative for jobs, decent housing and conditions. Unite against racism, unite against racist attacks, unite against poverty and inequality for socialist change that would mean that every citizen, regardless of colour, creed or country of origin, enjoys plentiful conditions, a guaranteed decent job and income and decent housing, but also is treated as an equal, regardless of their origins, their colour, their creed or country of origin. The anti-fascist movement gathered in Paisley on Friday the 9th of August to counter a fascist demonstration that had been advertised in the area of a hotel housing asylum seekers. The demo, a show of strength from the community, managed to ensure no fascists showed up. This is Richie's speech. And I'd like to introduce our next speaker from the Scottish our next speaker from the Scottish Socialist Party, Richie Benton. Friends and comrades, I think we should all look around and feel pride in the fact that such large numbers have turned out tonight to extend the hand of friendship instead of the fist of fascism towards people fleeing from wars, people fleeing from persecution, people who happen to have a brown or black face or people who have lived in this community for decades and then are subjected to death threats, attacks, physical assaults and arson attacks when the country went up in flames in England in the last week or so. We stand in solidarity with those being persecuted by these fascist and racist thugs. It goes without saying to condemn those who perpetrated that violence in the race riots. But let's be clear, the bigger criminals still are the thugs in suits who incited those riots. The likes, here, here. The likes of Nigel Farage, who of course pretends to distance himself now when there's been a backlash against the violence, but incited it by questioning whether or not the police were covering up for terrorists attacks when those little girls were murdered in Southport. The likes of Tommy Robinson, really known as Stephen Yaxley Lennon, who from the safe distance of his hotel, 400 pounds a night in Cyprus, is egging on people to attack holiday in hotels, burning down places where migrants and others and asylum seekers are f- afraid of dying uh, of living, of di- being burnt alive. Those are the people who incited this violence from a safe distance. And it's also a fact, of course, as others have said, that for years politicians have incited the conditions that have led to this violence with all their talk of stopping the boats. As far as I'm concerned, we're not just Farage and not just the Tories. But the right-wing Labour leadership talk about stopping the boats. They should instead, they should instead be stopping the very big boats with nuclear warheads on them that could wipe out the population of Scotland and beyond. That'd be a better priority than trying to scapegoat people who are fleeing wars, which quite often have been conducted by Britain themselves, including previous Labour governments like Tony Blair. That's where we should point the finger. As far as I'm concerned, people like Farage, Yaxley Lennon, Elon Musk, and others of that ilk deserve to be jailed. But 
And let's be clear, it's not the use of the courts, of the police, by the new Labour government that is stopping the fascists and racist thugs on the streets. It's expressions of people's power coming into action like we're doing tonight. And we have to, as others have mentioned, we have to rely on our own strength as a united working class through the trade union movement in particular to stop these thugs and to counter them and all their propaganda. We have to make it clear it's not migrants fleeing war that caused the financial crisis in 2008, it's billionaire bankers. It's not people fleeing war or people who've lived here for years but happen to be of a different colour to some of us who have caused the austerity of the last 15 years. It's the Tory government and the Labour government now hell bent on making that political choice of imposing continued poverty. It's not ethnic minorities who have stopped winter fuel payments to pensioners or continue to block children getting benefits because there's at least two other siblings in the family. It's a Labour government that's propping up the rich instead of standing up to the working class. We must rely on our own strength as a working class united to combat that. And we must also rely on the power and strength and discipline of the trade union movement to protect people from physical attack by the race rioters. The discipline, the stewarding, the combined strength of the union movement in particular, I think is key to that. And I'm proud of the fact that so many comes originally from Northern Ireland to say that which last week with the grotesque spectacle of a handful of far-right, racist, loyalist thugs taking orders from a handful of far-right, racist thugs from Dublin, far-right ultra-nationalists in Belfast, attacking people, burning them out, smashing their shops and so on. But the response of the working class in Belfast is that there's been three dreaming-led rallies in the last couple of days and another one tomorrow. Workers' unity is the key to fighting back. And I'm finished by saying this. Our task in combating the racists is to drain the swamp of despair, disillusionment and poverty that people that the far right are tapping into amongst the section of the population. We need to counter it with another alternative. The rally on the 7th of September should go ahead regardless of whether we've chased the fascists off the street meantime. It should go ahead and declare a campaign for measures like a £15 minimum wage, decent pay for all, 100,000 new council houses for rent, investment in decent public services to provide a society, a Scotland, and ultimately a socialist Scotland, which caters for all, regardless of colour, creed, or country of origin. Stand united for workers' rights and socialism.